If you are looking for a role in information technology that can pay $150,000 per year and more, then you have come to the right place. In today's video, I'll talk about a specific Oracle database administrator skills that can really accelerate your earnings and push you into those areas, $150,000, $200,000, $250,000 per year and more. So there is so much potential in this area, but it requires, and I want to say this up front, it requires some career planning. This is it's not something where you study for three or six months and then you can demand this type of paycheck. So you need to have a some learned skill set, some learned uh, knowledge, and then you need to back it up with experience on the job. So and that's where your challenge is. But with the right career planning, I'm happy to help you as well here. Uh, you can achieve this goal, I want to say, in the really short term, I don't even want to say midterm, but if you set it up correctly, one, two, maybe three years, you can be in that area and earn accordingly. So how do you get there? What do you need to know? Let's get started. So I mentioned there is the skill set that you build up when you build up job experience and then the learned type of skills that you learn from studying and going through certifications. And uh, so the skill sets that you need in short really are cloud integration and then HA or high availability, performance optimization, automation, and then security and compliance. And everything here that I just mentioned will go into more detail now. Cloud integration is really the first thing, and that is not just for Oracle database administrators, that is for system administrators and database administrators equally important. It doesn't matter if it's Amazon, AWS, Google, or Microsoft, or Oracle. And I'm kind of giving it away here already. So you as the database administrator, if you are able to work in different environments and potentially even hybrid environments where you maintain databases in Amazon and on the Oracle side, so you build an Oracle environment on Amazon AWS as an example, and you work in the Oracle Cloud or Microsoft Cloud, if you have this dual skill set, uh, then you're already well positioned uh, to move forward, to bring your career forward, because there's a lot of companies looking for that. There are very few companies that only work in one specific environment and nothing else. So one specific cloud. So that hybrid knowledge of where you connect applications from one cloud to another, uh, that skill set, that really pays the bills. And that is something that you can mostly really only acquire from a work experience, not necessarily something that you pick up. Of course, the basics you pick up from studying and learning, but in the end, putting it to work in the real world example or real world environment, uh, that's where it matters. Cloud integration is also important. Let's say you do a migration from Amazon AWS into Oracle or from Microsoft into Amazon. So companies sometimes can switch or they shift workloads between clouds because there are advantages being with one cloud and not the other. So these type of cloud migrations really carry a lot of value. There's a lot of responsibility and pressure on the individuals that work on these type of migrations. But there's also the big payoff where you can then really demand these type of salaries even if you wanted to go into consulting uh, later on, because these still sets, those scenarios are so complicated. Uh, it's something that companies are looking for and are willing to pay big bucks for. Another item where this is important is really disaster recovery. So you might be able to set up one cloud environment for your production environment. You use a different one uh, for your test or dev environment. And uh, that's also, again, uh, these environments, in the end, they need to match. And uh, that means the configuration. So you don't necessarily want to have your test environment in a different cloud, but uh, your test and production environment might be in the same cloud while your development environment again sits somewhere else. And that could be a cost opportunity as an example. And that brings me to the last point here for uh, the cloud integration. So cloud in general is not cheap. You pay a premium, but you're also getting a lot more in return. And for most companies, it's impossible to maintain the same type of redundancy, the same type of services in a private cloud, as an example. So public cloud is expensive. We know this. But when you can help to save your company a significant amount of money by really utilizing a cloud environment to the proper extent or say, no, we need to shift our loads into a different cloud because of cost savings. And here is where we can do this. So if you have this skill set, this is really, I want to say, a big important part uh, that makes you of interest for hiring companies.
HA or high availability, so real clusters and data guard as an example, those play an important role. Nobody that has a mission critical application, so let's just say Amazon might not be the best example, but Amazon itself is running their products in the Amazon AWS cloud. And uh, for Amazon, it's important that there is a high availability feature built in. So if the Amazon.com website would go down or for any of the countries, doesn't matter, uh, they will lose not just a couple thousand dollars per hour. Uh, I mean, we're talking here millions of dollars in revenue and profit that are at risk and high availability when they build such an application is important. I have not worked for Amazon. This is just a basic example, but it applies to anything really where companies rely on that their website, their product, the application is up and running 24-7, 365 with zero downtime. High availability means not just building clusters. It could also mean like you need to look into the data migration and uh, how do you roll uh, existing transactions into the database so that everything is up to date in case you have to fail over. Or when you have a load balancer in front of it, and again, this is, I want to say, a simplified approach, but if you use a load balancer and you have systems behind the load balancer, you need to make sure that the entire architecture is built correctly, that high availability is given and uh, that you're not having like different results popping up depending on which server, which cluster is delivering results. And again, for cloud, I just really want to visualize it so that it's easier to understand. So high availability, very important. And then, of course, in general, disaster recovery. Uh, if a data center goes up in smoke, uh, how do you recover from a disastrous situation like that. Speaking from my own experience, disaster recovery is not necessarily a skill that is easy to pick up. Yes, you can go and you let's say you come into an existing company, they have existing disaster recovery scenarios and exercises that they go through if they do such exercises. But how do you get there? So and if you are in a position where you can build these type of disaster recovery scenarios and the exercises that companies do at a certain scale, uh, then you have a skill set that not everyone possesses. So I was in the fortunate situation that I was able to, for one of my employers, we built a backup data center and we built build backup clusters on VMware at that time uh, to be able to just roll our production environment over. And we had data replication going on between the two data centers. And then we developed a lot of automation in here as well so that we could spin up additional VMware servers at that time, like in no time, fully automated, where you just execute a script and the script does all the hard work. But I was able to really be there from the ground up to build that second data center implement all the automation and related pieces and be able then to showcase that the investment is paying off for the company by building these disaster recovery training exercises where we cut the connection, we simulate a disaster and then bring everything back up in a certain time frame so that we could also put SLAs behind it. So that's a skill set that often you don't really get to because those opportunities are rare. So if you have these type of opportunities, I would definitely jump on it because that is a skill set, again, that other companies are willing to pay for. Performance optimization. So that's a very critical skill set that you need to have. And uh, sometimes it's just fractions of a second, milliseconds that are important. Think about stock trading on NASDAQ. I mean, there are so many orders coming in. Where do you think those orders are going? Who's handling that uh, type of volume of data? data going back and forth on the back end. So you can think of these type of systems, really. It's like uh, a single piece that slows these systems down can have a ripple effect, maybe all the way into the stock market. And that is a skill set that if you are able to tweak these type of systems to just even improve by a few seconds or fractions of seconds can make a difference. A lot of investment companies are putting their own data centers as close as possible to the NASDAQ data centers to have shorter connections, to have faster input output uh, going into stock trading as an example. And there are companies that are making uh, really a killing of money by buying and selling and using like even just fractions of a cent or penny or whatever the case may be here from a dollar, I don't even wanna talk about, but uh, where they can make a killing just because they're faster to pick up an order where somebody's selling and they have the ability to pick up that order, buy it and sell it again for just a few cents more. We're not talking like I'm selling a hundred shares of Nvidia or Amazon. We're talking like really large volumes of shares that are changing ownership 
where even just like a couple cents can make a big paycheck at the very end. So performance tuning here, very important still. Writing custom uh, SQL queries and uh, tune commands, uh, again, very important. So custom SQL tuning techniques uh, are super critical. If you can master this, uh, again, you are positioning yourself um, for a higher paycheck and more interesting work. So related of this, of course, resource management between clouds and on-prem environments, as an example. How do you handle the workloads? Are you able to shift something and so on? So these type of skills, uh, again, do not necessarily come along very often where you can learn those or pick those up. Look for these opportunities and jump on them if something opens up. I mentioned automation and automation in IT in general is something that you need to work on. If you don't know how to automate, you're putting yourself in the corner. You will be in a dead end road at one point and uh, will become obsolete. Automation is super critical, not just from a speed perspective, but also for redundancy that you can roll out a new code base, as an example, to hundreds of servers and know that the results will be identical. If you do things by hand and you install a new application on one server and then you move to the next one, there's already a risk that you are making a mistake or that the small configuration change is different between the servers and it will be very difficult to troubleshoot down the road. So being able to deploy an application or data in an automated way is very important. The same thing with a code base that you move from a development environment into a test environment and then later on in production. You want to make sure what you tested on and that is working moves exactly into production. So the, all the procedures related to that need to be automated so that you remove the human factor and fat fingering or whatever the case may be uh, to create different results because you need one result across the board, nothing different here. Uh, how do you learn automation? Of course, there's a lot of scripting involved and there are different scripting languages. Uh, I want to mention two here. I want to mention Python and Shell. Uh, that's a skill set in general that helps you not just with database administration, but also system administration and even coding uh, certain applications yourself, depending on what it is. So those are just two, there's more, uh, but I wanna mention these so that when you start building a foundational set of skills uh, that you have a good starting point. Last but not least, uh, security and compliance. So first of all, data security is super important. You need to know about the different encryption methods and how to, I want to say, structure databases and where you keep certain parts that should be connected, but maybe not together in the same database or on the same tables or whatever the case may be. So think passwords, social security numbers, account numbers, and so on, or credit card information. You have the credit card number, expiration date, the security code. So how do you store those in a way that they are secure? Even if somebody would get into the database, will they get all the data or do they just get a fraction of the data uh, because you're separating things out? So data security encryption, very important. But then compliance and security goes much, much further. So for one, can you audit everything correctly? Are you able to see who has access to the da database and who accessed the database? You might think your database is secure and the hacker is coming in from an end that, uh, from a connection that you did not expect anyone to come in. How do you know that your data is not being accessed by somebody that is not authorized uh, to go in there? So you need good auditing qualities and abilities, but also it's like um, who is within the company is allowed to do certain things in the data database uh, has access to the different systems. So you want to be able to log in. So let's say money suddenly disappeared and you are able to track it back, who logged into the system, who did what, and um, you need those capabilities to protect yourself, to protect your company's uh, assets from that perspective. And then uh, compliance is very important if you have a skill set in that area. So there are certain industry like healthcare, pharmaceutical, and financial industry. The companies operating in these spaces uh, have to obey certain compliance and risk frameworks. And if you understand what type of compliance needs to be met, then you are the person that these companies are looking for and they know it's a specialized skill set. I personally worked in the pharmaceutical industry and I got lucky to get in at the time when I got in. And uh, I had to learn, it's like, okay, compliance um, is a whole different beast compared to where I was working before when I was in a software development environment for the legal industry. So we were making software for legal. 
there were no those uh, uh, there were none of these compliance requirements that you have to deal with in the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. Same thing in the finance industry. I mean, Sarbanes Oxley is a, is a thing that uh, you need to understand. Uh, but of course, there's a lot more. And whenever money is involved or health, uh, the risk uh, of something going bad is very high. And that's why these compliance frameworks exist. And for the people that understand them, again, it's a skill set that helps them to secure work in these areas and to demand a healthy salary. So how do you get there? Uh, for one, I mentioned before, you have to look at learning the skill set and then building up work experience. So and you have to do some career planning. Let's start on the learning side first. So I want to introduce you to um, Oracle OCI. OCI stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And the certification is not a single certification. So there are different tracks and paths inside or hiding underneath OCI. But just when you start looking, okay, where can you obtain the skill set? Oracle has their own university where they offer free access to this type of training. Uh, that's where you can become certified. And uh, there's really, a, I mean, want to say, you want to spend a lot of time there if you want to become an Oracle DBA. It's very specialized, but it pays very well. So OCI is really, I want to say, that foundation that you want to look at. And it's for people that are non-technical, that work maybe in a sales role on selling Oracle products or services. So if you work for like a managed services provider, a consulting company, that's where this can uh, come into play, where you are able to sit at the table and really provide I want to say foundational knowledge to your potential clients and where they can also see that you are an expert in this field. So a very important in a sales role and there are technical sales roles and non-technical sales roles. OCI can help in both. Then, of course, OCI is very important for system administrators, uh, developers, architects, database administrators. So if you want to up your skill set, that's something to look into and really identify, okay, what helps you, where you are or where you want to go. And then for, I want to say, career changers and students. Again, career changers is, I want to say, difficult. Maybe you want to change careers into information technology, and there's just so much stuff in the very beginning. I want to, I want to say you have to pick your poison in the beginning. And this might not be the right thing, but it's something you can plan for. So, and uh, that leads me to career development uh, that you need to plan for, because this will not be a three or six month plan that you execute. It will be three, maybe five years. And you have to not just work for that goal, but you also have to keep track of changes happening in the IT environment. And that applies to students as well. So if you are going through, let's say, a bachelor's and you want to get a degree in IT, IS, or computer science, whatever the case may be, again, you need to plan for this and um, maybe pick up the courses that lead you uh, to get the credits for database administration. And it doesn't matter if it's Oracle in the beginning or not. The foundational knowledge SQL is very similar across the board. And then you specialize in a certain technology. But uh, this is something where it's very important. Identify where you want to go and map out the plan. And then you start working towards the plan. You acquire the skill set from learning. Now you have already more knowledge than somebody that doesn't have the skill set. You can apply for junior or mid-level roles, or you work at a company where you can grow into that department and uh, then really take your career to that next level. So I hope this gives you a good um, insight into how to become an Oracle database administrator, not just from the basics, but where you are so specialized and skilled that companies come and knock on your door and asking you to work for them and they will throw signing bonuses potentially at you or uh, relocation uh, bonuses and they pay above average just for you to come and work for them. So that is, I want to say, the ultimate goal that you want to achieve from here. And I hope this video gives you that foundation uh, to get there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.